Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be showing you the new map Vertigo in the Halo 4 Champions Bundle DLC that was recently released. You can pick it up for $10 or you can buy the maps individually for $6. Off the spawn here you definitely want to go for the rockets as they spawn in the very middle on that rock. I believe blue team does have a slight advantage here because you can then lift up this lift and be quite safe as you hold this top middle position. Right here, the only way you know that you can hit a rocket like that is with experience. I'm trying to get gameplay where I'm very experienced with the maps. I don't want to have gameplay where I'm just trying to figure them out. These maps are new, so please ignore any rookie errors I may make. As it is, I thought this game was very good. I'm the most positive on my team. I use a very wide variety of weapons on this map and I do traverse most if not every part of the map which is really nice for the commentary and film that I'm going to show you here. I am sporting the green camo BR skin. You can only get this skin if you purchase the champions bundle. Now right here I would like to mention that the game is pretty close especially more towards the end of the game. I push over here to try to help my teammate and he ends up dying, but I clean up his kill. That enemy player actually plasma pistol charged, plasma pistol my teammate, and then shot him with the headshot. That's actually a legitimate strategy if you can land the charged plasma bolt, which will take down all their shield. Right here, I'm nading this walkway. It's very easy to nade this walkway as long as you're top middle. This guy pushes into the cave, and we end up pushing him together. Always double team people in bubble shields because that will not enable their shields to recharge at all. I caught that to my teammate and for whatever reason the enemy player does not see my teammate. Right here I would like to mention that picking up the overshield with speed boost or with an overshield doubles to triples the effectiveness of the sword period. And I did master the sword commendation during this game. My teammate unfortunately ends up dying here before I'm able to get the kill. And you can really intimidate the enemy team, as you see me doing right here. Charging across the map, soaking up the enemy player's clip of bullets and killing him still and surviving. That's very, very discouraging to the enemy players and um, makes them really fearful of what you can do with the sword. Now, I would like to mention that at this moment, I do shoot the switch across the map, and if you don't know already, these switches activate an electrical pulse that grows through the floor and saps away all your shields. Now, I'd like to address a few things that people simply do not seem to understand. As you can see, the electrical pulse only affects the yellow parts of the map, the parts that are enclosed by this yellow strip, all right? It's very obvious where the, the electricity will pulse through the floor, all right? And it's very avoidable. This first electrical pulse that you're seeing right now, this does not take out your shield. It's the secondary electrical sort of explosion that actually takes down your shield fully. It doesn't damage your health at all. The fusion coils placed around the zone do not blow up. I wish they actually did. It's kind of a little strange why they don't. And as you can see, our button is up and it's about to be shot by an enemy player. So you can actually see firsthand what it's going to look like here. You can see the floor pulses, and I jump, but a little too late. You can avoid the electrical pulse because it is a slight delay before it actually goes off, so you can see it coming. I think the timing is almost perfect. I think it needs to be a little bit faster in its explosion, but I think as it is, it's almost perfect. It almost is like a power weapon that you can use on the map but only in specific scenarios. It's not stupid at all. Here my teammate ends up intimidating two players away from my position as I'm able to recharge my shields. Very good job on his part as I work around my team to get these kills with a sword. Back to the electrical switch. It's a very viable tool to use during the game. I think this map, personally, is what Abandon should have been. Okay, And that's, frankly, an understatement. This map is everything Abandoned should have been. Um, it's brighter, it's prettier, it definitely can be used in competitive settings. This guy does an excellent job of um, jetpacking away as I stay alive for quite some time here with the Thruster Pack and Sword. 
this map reminds me so much of a band and it's not even funny. Um, and I can't express how good it is. It is going to take you a little bit to understand that there are two very lengthy caves on both sides of the map. And I would highly recommend just running around the map in custom games to get a good feel for it. This game will also give you a very good idea, as you can see the right hand side forest cave that I'm running through right now. Um, a good idea of where that is. And right here, I end up thruster packing the wrong direction and ended up getting cleaned up with a very good headshot. I should have thruster packed to the left there, not straight forward. I should have lunged and as soon as I lunged pulled my stick to the left and pressed my armor ability button to thrust the pack to the side and away from the headshots that were incoming. This is really unfortunate. I should have seen this coming from a mile away as the enemy player charges me in the cave with the sword that I dropped for him and ends up completely destroying me. The reason why I pulled out my pistol there is because I can pistol him very quickly, bring his shields down and melee him for a possible kill. Unfortunately, your melee damage is absolutely cancelled if they lunge at you. You do no melee damage if you try to melee an enemy sword carrier, and he's lunging at you at the same time. You do absolutely no damage to them. This is unlike Halo 3 and Reach, I believe. Um, it was a little more possible to do melee damage with someone lunging at you, but in Halo 4, it's absolutely negated. There is no melee damage whatsoever. Right here, I do wait for the enemy players to throw the grenades. This guy is lagging only during this part of the game, thankfully. And I'm going to call down my railgun pretty soon here as this player gets cleaned up. Now, I do drop through these two holes on the map, which, to be frankly honest, especially in King of the Hill, I just wanted to briefly mention that these holes are not used enough, as you can drop down and then immediately pop back up this lift right here, okay? These holes are not used enough, and I feel like um, they're underrated, to say the least. As you can see, uh, you're going to see right here a terrible example of my melee or close quarter skills. I know one of my friends said he was rocket challenged, as he's not able to really get a whole lot of kills when he has rockets. The same thing can be applied to me with melees. I recently mastered the melee commendation, and I've been SR-130 for at least three months now. I end up canceling two railgun shots here, as I don't get a kill for around 60 to 90 seconds after I got that clutch melee kill bottom middle on a one-shot opponent. I want you to notice how both of my teammates are dead here, and what I do. This is critical, a critical difference between good players and bad players. I'm not going to charge these three guys on my radar even though I have a power weapon. I'm going to bait back and use the radar to my advantage. I want you to notice as soon as my teammate comes onto my radar. Notice my teammate, who's right over here, who's on my radar now. I know the enemy players are going to be able to see him. So I'm using my teammate sort of as bait as I crouch a little bit, and as you can see, this player is looking for me, trying to find me, and I'm crouching a little bit, and he immediately passes me and becomes distracted and kills my teammate. Now, you may say, why did you do that? You should have helped your teammate. Well, I'm trying to, but as you can see, I kill three enemy players, in fact, killing a fourth enemy player, and you may why wonder why that third guy had charged out. He charged out because he was trying to grab this railgun. And unfortunately, I passed his body, so I thought I had picked up his railgun ammo, but I didn't. It's actually laying right here. That's an unfortunate blunder on my part. I'm getting a very good railgun kill here. And unfortunately for this next shot, I end up whipping my reticle, just like I did on that previous kill. I ended up completely whiffing on this railgun shot. You don't want to get overconfident with your railgun shot. Here, though, I end up sort of making up for it as I kill this enemy player with a really solid railgun shot, but end up getting killed. Put solid shots in the guy top middle, call him out and toss a nade. Another underrated spot on the map is this little hole. This little hole will allow you to escape pretty quickly as you can get behind this little um, column here and charge bottom middle to escape enemy fire. 
As you can see, the enemy player just shot our button, and my teammate gets no shield here. Shooting the button is only advantageous, really, if you have enemy players near this platform to take out the players. As you can see, none of us got taken out. All three of my teammates end up dying on my radar here. All three of them end up dying in this hallway due to the enemy player's binary rifle. I want you to notice how I approach this situation. As you can see on the kill feed, he got a triple kill. Notice how I approach the situation. Instead of charging this player, I use the roof to stay away. He, he whiffs on both binary shots as I end up picking up the saw, getting an incredibly good long range saw shot here as I pulse the saw, don't spam the trigger all the way, getting a really long range good saw kill here. Really good job of the enemy team backing up here, staying alive as their enemy player charges from behind and kills me. Not sure how all my teammates died behind me there again, but that's just how the game goes. Right now we're one kill ahead of the enemy team, and I'm going to get an ordinance pretty soon here as I clean up a kill that my teammates called out one shot. Going down a beam rifle, I'm going to try to get as many kills as I can with it. This is a grenade kill that you're about to see right here. I toss a nade and then hit someone in the body and the grenade blows up on them. Not actually what I intended to do, but I'll take the kill nonetheless. Almost end up getting a pretty cool headshot there, but don't see here. See how I'm flanking here? See how we flank through the tunnel, like I said? And I end up catching them off guard and getting a good snapshot. Right here, I know there's a second player, but I know that my teammate is right here, and he's working with me. So he's going to charge around the corner and try to find this guy. And sure enough, he's crouching right there. That's why he disappeared off my radar. I look across the map, but this is the last kill of the game. And my teammate cleans it up very well there. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay on the new map, Vertigo. I'm going to actually now show you how to download the map. So here I am at the Halo 4 main menu. This is the easiest way to download the maps. Go to the Xbox Live Marketplace. It'll bring you up a guide menu. You can also do this from your dashboard if you really want to. As I load this, I'd like to clear up a small matter of confusion. This is the Champions Bundle. The Champions Bundle includes three separate DLCs in one bundle. The th Steel Skin Pack, right here. The Bullseye Pack and the Infinity Armor Pack. Infinity the Armor Pack, three new armor sets. Steel Skin Pack, a gold slash orange skin for every weapon you load out with. And the Bullseye Pack contains the most out of all three of them. That's why it's $6. It contains a new armor set a new game type ricochet, and the map's Pitfall, the remake of The Pit from Halo 3, and the map you just saw, Vertigo. So you can pay $6 for just the two maps and a new armor set and game type, or you can buy the Champions Bundle, which gets you everything for $10. Saving you, let's see here, so that would be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, saving you $2. So guys, I hope this video helped you understand the map Vertigo, and also how to purchase the maps if you like me, how I slow down the gameplay and give you in-depth tips and tricks. Like the video, please. It helps out a lot. Subscribe from future Halo 4 content. I'll see you on the next video that I capture or whatever I end up recording. Thanks, guys.